All right, Salim Razai here again with another Walking the Line from Research to Practice. And the trial we're going to be talking about today is the classic trial, IV fluid restriction in septic shock. Now, this trial was just published a few weeks ago. And the clinical question the authors were trying to answer was, after an initial fluid resuscitation in patients with septic shock, does a restrictive fluid strategy improve 90-day mortality in the ICU compared to a standard fluid strategy? Now, this was a multi-center, multinational, randomized clinical trial performed in 31 ICUs, and patients got randomized to one of two groups after that initial resuscitation. In the restrictive fluid strategy, patients were given fluids in aliquots of 250 to 500 cc's at a time. In the standard fluid group, there was no upper limit established, so they could keep getting fluids. Now, how do you decide how to transfuse these people fluids. Well, in the restrictive fluid group, it was either signs of severe hypoperfusion, keeping up with fluid losses, signs of dehydration, and then keeping up with just maintenance fluids. In the standard fluid group, it was continue giving fluids as long as hemodynamics were improving. And then the last three things were exactly the same as the restricted fluid strategy, fluid losses, dehydration, and keeping up with maintenance fluids. So really the difference between groups about when to transfuse fluids was severe hypoperfusion in the restrictive group versus continued improved hemodynamics in the standard fluid group. Now the patients that were included, these were adult patients greater than or equal to 18 years of age with septic shock and having shock for less than 12 hours. The primary outcome was 90 day mortality as far as the results, this was about 1,500 patients, and all patients, didn't matter which group were, you were in, 24 hours prior to randomization, all received their initial resuscitation, and that was a median of about 3,100 cc's of fluid. Now, after that initial resuscitation, when we look at how much fluid was given between groups, we can see in the restrictive treatment group, the median amount of fluids was about 1,800 cc's, and in the standard uh, treatment group, median fluids was about 3,800 cc's. So they did achieve separation between the groups, between these two strategies. Now the critical result of the primary outcome is there was no difference in 90 day mortality between groups. Now this is an important concept to understand when looking at this trial. When we have patients with septic shock, there's an initial resuscitation and then there's continued resuscitation after that. So for those of us down in the emergency department, the 30 cc's per kilogram of IV fluids, this study doesn't answer that question. As a matter of fact, it didn't matter which group you were in, you received your initial resuscitation. What this trial focuses on is continued resuscitation over the next 24 hours up to about a week. And they looked at this restrictive versus standard fluid strategy, and that's exactly what this trial was trying to answer. Now, luckily, there are more trials that are coming out that will try and answer that initial question. The second problem with this trial is when we look at the separation between groups in terms of amount of fluid given. They did achieve separation, but the difference in fluids given between groups at five days really wasn't that much. I mean, we're talking about 1,500 cc's over a five-day period. And then when we look at the difference in fluid balance between groups, it was even smaller. It was about 750 cc's per group. And so then it begs this question of, did the standard care group, were they already being treated as a restrictive strategy? And the authors actually state that when they were doing their interim analyses, they saw that over time, there was a decrease in the amount of fluids that were given in the standard strategy group. The third thing that is rather interesting in this study is when we look at the source of infection, there was way more GI infections than pulmonary infections. As a matter of fact, when we look at the actual breakdown, 37% of the infections were a GI source, whereas 27% were from a pulmonary source. When we look at historical sepsis trials, usually the driving infection source is pulmonary. Now, the authors had an interesting thought on this because this trial occurred during the time of COVID. And we all know that during the time of COVID, there were all these prevention strategies like wearing masks, social distancing, avoiding indoors, and many other strategies. And it may be that all these strategies decrease the incidence of pulmonary infections.
So the bottom line for this study can really be taken as one of two things. So in critically adults with septic shock, having received their initial 30 cc's per kilogram of fluid resuscitation. Conclusion number one, a restrictive strategy is not equal to a standard strategy for 90 day mortality. Takeaway number two, maybe a restrictive strategy is not worse, but also not superior to a standard strategy for 90 day mortality. The between group differences was really small in this trial over that five days. And so the question becomes, has standard care become more restrictive? Leave me your thoughts and questions in the comments. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.